There's online at home. There's probably the something on. And the, well, yeah, 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 yeah. There's all of that, and different variations within those. Talking of which, let's introduce our next guest, Ben Keith is the man behind Star Sports, who you may have heard of. They do a lot in racing and in greyhound racing and uh, increasingly on the high streets as well, Ben, where I see you're expanding. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, that is a plush chair, isn't it? That, like, we some... would never... Boise, we've never been offered a chair like that, have we? Look at that! That's going to be real leather and all sorts. We are in the wrong game, as, as, as we've known for a long time. Uh, tell us, just in a nutshell, Ben, what you do, because we're talking about bookmakers taking a bet, so how... How do you go about it? Well, can, can I just start by saying um, thank you very much to, to yourselves and Matt in particular for always taking an interest in bookmakers and, and um, continuing to promote the betting ring. It's, uh, it's where so many of us uh, started our passion. I think we all, we all enter the game uh, from a different angle and I, I certainly entered from the betting ring and he keeps that mystique and, uh, and um, you know, uh, the fire of, on the big days of the ring alive. So thank you very, very, very much to him. Um, and um, uh, actually this chair that you, you say it's red um, and when I took this office over, it was my, my hero. He was a very famous bookmaker, Tony Morris. Many of your viewers would have watched him work, but everything was green. All of the leather was green, and I'm a bit superstitious. I never wear green to the races. Um, I don't have green near me. Don't go in a green car. So I had all of the leather changed to red. But um, thank you very much for having me onto the show this morning. And to be able for once to be able to put, put a bookmaker's side of the story forward rather than just endless punters wailing about their own rights and um, fairness and being treated properly and, until they've obviously got an edge themselves and then they're more ruthless than Pablo Escobar. <laughs> right. You've opened um, the, the can of worms, which is uh, good to get stuck into. So you said that there's a lot of wailing and gnashing of te teeth and, and it's not justified in your view because punters are up to no good. Is that your argument? Right. Well, um, I'll say this to you. Uh, the Gambling Commission... Um, Anybody who says that they are not efficient, do not leave any stone unturned, uh, are not incredibly strict and absolutely terrifying, either has chosen to never attend and watch one of their meetings, which I've offered all of these, um, um, you know, self-proclaimed um, gambling experts and all of these people really who are just touting themselves around to get consultancies um, or write newspaper articles and push themselves forward by, by, by sticking the knife into bookies. You know, nobody's ever um, uh, sold newspapers or gained themselves extra votes by saying, well, oh, oh, should we listen to both sides for once? No, let's just, uh, let's just attack a bookie and come out with stupid comments like I've never met a poor bookie. When the Gambling Commission arrive, they know exactly what they're doing. They go through everything. They do not stay until they're complete. They then send letters that go on for pages and pages and pages with a million different points for you to respond to and improve on and all the rest of it. And um, none of them include any poor behaviour uh, from, from punters. I mean, it takes two to make a bet. My company pays tens of thousands of pounds a year um, uh, to have a licence. It used to be 25 quid a year. Um, we pay tens of thousands of pounds a year in voluntary, but very much obligatory um, uh, charitable donations to uh, gambling charities. Um, and... Uh, I haven't seen any slow counters, people intimidating my betting shop staff, people who sign up as Sean Boyce, deposit £20, self-exclude after having one bet, then deposit two and a half grand, but put the O as a, as, as a zero, deposit uh, and then bet like lions. If they win, press the withdraw button. If they lose, they're emailing in, telling you uh, it's all very unfair and they know how strict the gambling commission are. Um, and they say, if you do not give me my money back, da -de da -de da they use them like a protection racket, I'm going to go to the Gambling Commission. What are you going to do about it? You, you, you raised, Ben, some, some good points about skullduggery and poor behaviour by punters, which I think Matt and myself and, and, and most people watching, I'm sure, will understand does go on. But would you concede that there are what you and I might call innocent civilians getting caught in the crossfire uh, by being restricted, being pushed away from betting on racing, who aren't doing any of the things that you're describing. They're just, they're just trying to have a bet. 
If you walk around Mayfair betting shops or the betting ring, you will meet every single demographic and type of person except an honest poor man. There are no innocent civilians in the betting world. This is not a humanitarian disaster. We spend our days watching sport and racing, trying to win as much money as we can from each other. A punter will do and say whatever he has to say or do to get an edge. Over, over the years, that's been proven, right? Again and again and again. And um, th there aren't any Oxfam volunteers here who are being taken advantage of. These are people who want to gamble all day. I want to take their bets all day, right? But now I, I, I've, got to, I've got to win the money. I've got to get paid the money if they're a credit punter. And then I've got to cover every single possible angle of ambiguous rules from an extremely strict gambling commission and extremely thorough who um, are giving enormous fines to bookmakers, um, you know, tens of millions of pounds in some cases. And here's the other thing, right? Hunters started out by saying, oh, no, no, it's all about the FOBTs, the roulette machines in the betting shops. When they've been um, dumbed down, we'll go away. As soon as they were dumbed down, they ran on, you know, uh, stronger than Skirlo champ towards, um, right, now let's have a go at the online bookies. I've said, I'm a bookmaker, I bet online. Um, I've said to the gambling commission, okay then, well, if we turn the online casino off, does that mean we get a buy and we can conduct our racing and sports business in peace and not, not have, um, uh, you know, people jumping all over us? Absolutely not. But Absolutely not was the response. And, um, you know, the, there's, there's no concession there at all. And as soon as this, they will never stop these people. It will be more and more and more. And earlier on, very correctly, Stephen Harris, respected man, he's been a professional gambler for decades. He said, look, why should somebody who's been betting for years, um, very reasonably, da di da di da um, have to do all of these affordability checks? Hunters have done this to themselves. They wanted the gambling review because they thought it was all going to be about legalised best odds guaranteed. You must bet eight places on the golf. Uh, silly justice refunds. Let's forget the rules of racing and its double result for everybody. No rule fours because apparently they're unfair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. None of that's going to happen. All of these people who were promoting themselves saying, oh, when there's a gambling review, you're going to get all these wonderful things. Where have they all gone? Oh, they faded away to go and promote themselves on the next social cause, right? This is, this is all great stuff. I want to return some questions to you, but we've got to take a break just before the hour. Can, can we take that break? We, we're going to let you go, but I think you've done such a, a strong job from, from your red chair that can we come back to you after we take a break? You can. I'm terribly nervous, but let, let, I'll wait a bit longer. Well, no, I'd hate to see you when you're not nervous. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll, I fear we should come back with Ben in a green chair, to be honest. But anyway. Uh, no, no, bad luck. Ben, bad is, pretty, luck. Ben no, is pretty no, pumped no, up. Green no, 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 no green in Ben's office. Welcome back to Racing Debate here on Sky Sports Racing. We do have more people to hear from. We're going to hear from IBAS with uh, Richard Haler about uh, adjudicating between customers and bookmakers. But we're, we're keeping Ben on for a little while longer because you, uh, it felt like you were just warming up there, uh, uh, Ben. Matt, you, you had a question. Yeah, so I had to counter, I think, one or two other things, Ben. The first one is that you appeared to put us all in, in the same boat that... All punters are basically cheats. Now, I know you might say, well, all punters are only trying to do one thing, which is win. But would you say it's, there is no doubt that there are punters out there who have been losing punters, let's say, five, ten years. They have a couple of days of doing well. And all those years of losing have no reflection on what they are then restricted on after a couple of days. In other words, not everyone is trying to steal things. Not everyone is trying to nick a price. Not everyone has multiple accounts. There are punters out there who just do it for fun. They regularly lose. But then if they just have a couple of good days or a week of good betting, suddenly their fivers and tenors each way are restricted to £1.67 and 33p and things like that. Matt, you are an absolute professional in 
hosting and producing their a television program. I don't know anything in the whole world about anything except betting, gambling, and talking to people. Now, um, I think that everybody else's game looks easy from afar and the grass is always greener. Look, if you're going to bet with a firm, I'm not going to mention their names, but a Ryan-esque easy jet type firm, and it's money back on this, eight places on that, best odds guarantee on that, they'll lay you 24 hours before on the 8 o'clock at Wolverhampton, you can get a bet on a Henlow dog race at 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, 8 to 1, and it goes off at 2 to 1. Um, if you, so Occasionally, there's going to be an anomaly that the computer's going to say no. These are enormous, enormous businesses um, where how can you moan when you're getting all these different concessions? You can't moan about Ryanair. So are, um, are you saying, Ben, that you're, what you're doing, which is perhaps more, more personalised, more boutique, if you like, allows you to make better judgments, informed judgments? And so it can be done, but maybe it's a question of scale. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it costs 25 quid to go to Malaga on, on Ryanair and it probably costs 600 quid to go uh, business class um, uh, on uh, British Airways. And I mean, I think that uh, the, the point being is, is the other thing is his minimum bet guarantee. This again is a load of utter rubbish. It's a typical punterism where they give their truth, but it's only about seven or eight percent of the story. They don't want minimum bet guarantee. They can have what they like on five minutes before the race. I'm here. Let's. You can. I tell you what. We'll have another day of Royal Ascot. Have, 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 let's back some more favourites at Royal Ascot and have as much as you like on. They want minimum bet guarantee with best odds guaranteed, with quarter the odds, with no 5p rule for the night before at Wolverhampton at eight o'clock at night. What would you say to Damien Kay on Twitter, who says anyone that wins or gets value gets restricted to bets of pennies? I'm a working class bloke who lives in Blackburn in a council house. Why are they allowed to discriminate in 2022? If a bet's offered, then it should be all at the same stake amount. As I said, in gambling, it takes two to make a bet. Let's leave all of the, um, you know, mug-hugging and cuddling each other and we all care about punters and all the rest of it to, to one side, right? I, I work to a bottom line. My first bet at the dogs was two pounds, probably uh, maybe Damien's bet, first bet at the dogs was two pounds. Now, punters come in all different sizes. I will do business with every single possible demographic except an honest poor man right across the social spectrum from somebody having five pounds on to somebody who wants to have a million pounds on but they all have one thing in common they do what's best for themselves now hang on well, well, who, am, who am i working for i've got a break even of half a million quid a week oh what shall i just let some leakage through shall, do you, uh, you know i'll tell you what why don't you give me some free adverts on your advert breaks to be a nice guy should should all punters be losing punters then no, I've had punters win £2 million off me and I've got it wrong. I don't judge the race. But would you I lay judge... them every time I they judge... want to come on after that? No, I've, I, I, I've had my bum smacked for £2 million quid, and at that point I had to take an eight count and say I'm out of here. Right. But that doesn't mean that occasionally I might have a punter who's been playing with me for a few weeks, a few months. I'm looking at him. Oh, where do you know uh, all these uh, punter stories don't quite add up? And and uh, oh, I'm a playboy and I just like gambling. Oh, I don't think so. Right. And and I'll, buy, I'll buy, bow out maybe when I'm breaking even. My opinion is on the man, not the race. Um, and um sometimes I get that opinion wrong. So a lot of people have won a hell of a lot of money off me when I've been wrong. But look, I have a good feeling for these things. And, and, and when I'm looking at somebody nine times out of 10, I know, I know what type of person I'm looking at. But that, that, that's how I bet. There's many different ways to find value. You, you will interview on your show paddock judges, form judges, speed rating people, uh, bookmakers who bet to an opinion. I haven't seen many of them last, but but whatever. There's 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 many many different ways to to um, to, to 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 get a profit out of the game. I bet to figures and faces.
Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's, it, look. Final one. As I said earlier, I, I spoke to a professional punter, bet late. We spoke to Stephen Harris, bet late. And basically, Ben has said it as well. Bet, you know, if you want to get what you want on these days, bet late. So we are learning something. Now, there'll be professional punters out there, of course, who will say, well, I know all this. But there is a message here that if you do try and nick every little bit of value in the morning or every single rick, then you are going to struggle. But if you do bet late, there might be a chance of getting on. I think that's something we're learning. Whether, whether it's reality, Sean, only the people can tell us. But that is something that's coming across during the show. Just final final question on that, Ben, because this is, this is a, a, a principle of bookmaking. Would, would, would you limit or, or close down some, some, someone who is winning off you, even, even if they were betting the opposite side of the market. So you said Ascot favourite. So everyone's piled into the favourite at Ascot and, and, and the favourite is a loser for half a million in your book. Uh, but a shrewd professional who, who you lose to wants to bet the opposite way. Would you still accommodate them because you're balanced on the book or, 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 or would you play the man in that case and, and not, not take his bet? most valuable commodity in our industry is information. I, I do not want to be taking any underhand information. I want to be taking information from proven long-term judges, like Stephen Harris, who you, you had on your show 20 minutes ago. Um, and I'm very, very much interested in, in, in we, you know, my company, I, obviously I, I'm not here to do an advert or whatever, but um, uh, we, we, we have a lot of mark accounts that we, we use where we do entertain people to win small amounts, to win 500 quid, to win a grand because we want the mark and it gives us confidence to then lay more of the favourite. Yes, so absolutely, if you want to have, a, have an account. But here's one thing, you can't, you can't come on to me and say, oh, can I have a lay to lose account and I bet on second half away team volleyball flips or whatever it is. It's got it's got to be on on things that I the information that I can then use and bet around. Gotcha. Um, but no, no, I mean, of course, uh, anybody who's a very very good judge, I want them betting with me and I want their mark. But it's going to be for small money. Look, many thanks, uh, Ben. Been good fun. Uh, thanks for your insights and thanks for joining us. Cheers, Ben. Have a good day. Thank you very much and good luck to you all. Uh, ben Keith, there. I mean. The point you've raised about 